Welcome, our first week participant, Kathy, will talk about engaging isolated nonsense.
that a big part of Mensa is really about making connections and communicating with people. Uh, you guys may have noticed in your registration bags that little flyer for a leap. Um, and up here I've asked people to tweet their answers to what do you love most about Mensa? Um, these are some of the responses we've, we've had coming in. So basically the, uh, the responses really come down to it's the friends we make, community, networking, conversations. It's it really is all about the people. Um, got some Facebook things as well because not everybody knows how to do this Twitter thing. I don't. Um, but again, no matter who you ask, no matter where you ask it, it's about the people. What about you guys? Do you feel that uh, there's anything else to add? What, what, how do you, what do you get out of Mensa? What's, what's your, what's your thing? What do you love most about Mensa? The people. The people. <laughs> I fit in in a place where I fit in nowhere else, and I don't have to conform. Excellent. That's great. That's a good answer. Anyone else want to share? I mean, it's for the money. <laughs> <laughs> People understand jokes right away. They might not yeah. laugh, but, but they still understand. So, so as I've moved from place to place, Mensa has been sort of a, a ready-made social set for me to step into. And I met my family in Mensa. I met my wife. We have two children. Have you seen the immense love stories? <laughs> okay, so um, it really is all about uh, making connections within that, so we just we can all connect and great, make these great communities. Um, unfortunately, we're all the lucky ones. We're all here talking to each other and having laughs. But there are some people who don't have this connection to Mensa, um, and I call these ones the isolated Mensa. All right, um, we just. We can't communicate. There's, there's whatever reason. We've got all sorts of different reasons. Um, this is my my sad little isolated thing. Oh. He's, he's all alone. <laughs> he's just hanging out for somebody to talk to and to understand, if not laugh at his jokes. Um, so as I said, I've been isolated for different reasons throughout my membership, um, and I know I've had lots of different reasons for my isolation. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one. Has anybody here sort of experienced isolation from that sort? Yes. Shahara. Do you want me to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, have you, have you, what, what are your reasons? Why have you been isolated? What have been the factors that have stopped you from connecting? Uh, so, I actually live in Canada, and I've never been to a Canadian event because there aren't many. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. 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 Nobody do any fact checking on this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right. Well, what I might ask then is that maybe it's uh, a case of not having activities that interest you, or like you haven't. There are. Um, there's a wide dearth in uptake in membership, and a lot of the crowd is seven plus. And while I love 70 plus people, I, I, I don't have very much in common in daily activities. I'll talk about Skype and then they'll punch me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So that's a couple of interesting things. Um, what other factors are there for isolation that, that you've experienced or that you can think of? Anyone want to? Why don't you just. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, in my group, I'm not isolated, but that's because I'm in town. Mm. Our local group is about two thirds within a five county area, and about one third is going to cost them more than an hour to drive yeah. in. All right, so geographic pretty much anything. Yeah, and the they are so distributed. I've tried to build uh, an area. Hey, there's a group of you real close to Toon, mm. Tennessee. Uh, why don't y'all get together? Let me yeah. know about it. Yeah. Crickets. <laughs> yeah, that's what we have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Any other ideas? Technology is a barrier in some places. Technology is a barrier. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I'm in uh, Mensa, Hawaii, and we have five plus islands, yeah. plus countries. 
uh, in our geographic region, but one of our members on the Big Island wants, to, I'm, a, I'm a testing coordinator and a proctor. She wants to be a testing proctor. She doesn't use a computer. Doesn't oh. use email. Mm -hmm. Our copy, our newsletter okay. to her. So it's more so like a lack of technology. Can be a for some people in remote areas. Uh, yeah, okay. Fair enough. That makes sense. Yes. Um, I was just going to say older people, people with age, they may be less able to go out. Yeah, yeah, sorry. And also anybody who's ill or disabled, mm -hmm. mentally or physically, yeah. is a huge, I'm sure, to yeah. dare to reach people. Yeah. So I'll go through some of the reasons that I've sort of thought up with, although I've personally experienced. So geographic distance, <laughs> we've all got that one. Um, yeah, like I said, when I've you know, been in there, so I've usually been quite far away. And uh, I'm currently living in Finland, which is really, really far away from my Australian Mensa community. Um, so that's a big one. Uh, oh, yep, health. So as you said, physical health. Um, I know various members who are chronically ill or age, and you know it's hard to plan ahead for an event, or you just it's just not physically possible. Um, having a lack of disposable funds. Can anyone say impoverished student? I can. <laughs> I've said that a lot. Um, sometimes even just going out to the local pub and buying a beer is like, no, um, I think I'll eat this week instead. <laughs> this is not food. Um, so I've been told. Kill Kenny, kill it. Yeah, no. um, having a, a busy schedule. Uh, I know I've been guilty of this as well. Yeah, sometimes I'm just too busy to, to have fun. <laughs> um, that's okay. Uh, social anxiety and shyness. I think this is a, a problem more for people who haven't made that first step into to come into a gathering. It's like, oh, okay, I've got into this group, but who are these mentors? Who are these crazy people that I'm going to go and commit myself to being around? You know, are they going to talk about mathematics all night? I'm like, oh, 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 oh. You know, it can be a big issue. Um, apathy, again. <laughs> Sometimes I would just be happy to sit at home, look at cat pictures on the internet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think I'm the only one. Um, we've also got occasionally a lack of just suitable mentor events. Uh, you know, I know that there are plenty of in my local area, like pub trivia nights. That's great. Trivia, great. I suck at trivia. I really, I'm just so terrible at trivia. However, um, there's a guy who works at Penguin Sanctuary, and as staff, he can have um, after-hours visits, have a Mensa after-hours Penguin Sanctuary visit. That's cool. That's something you can't get outside of Mensa. It's a bit unusual. It's unique. Let's give this a go. Um, or something we did uh, a little while ago was um, we climbed a mountain and played Scrabble at the top. So it was like a games night, but with a twist. <laughs> that was a great crime. It's something you just you don't do by yourself. We're outside of us crazy people. Um, having a lack of transport accessibility, especially for younger members who you know might need to rely on mum and dad to drive them around the places, or uh, you know, plenty of adult members who don't have their own transport or relying on public transport, all sorts of things there. Lack of awareness. Um, if we don't know that there's something happening, we're not going to be attending. You know, we really need to be aware of what's going on. So I was kind of waiting for that one to come up in the first picture on the spot. Oh, yeah. Sean Harris. Sean Harris? I mean, John. John. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go on Smith here. Yeah. Um, we, uh, it, we just, in the last, say, 15, 16 months, uh, there was a regional gathering in Toronto. Uh, we had a regional gathering in May of last year in Niagara Falls, and a uh, Canadian uh, annual gathering in Niagara Falls just this past May, uh, was attended by about 165 people, mm -hmm. including a young men's track. There's a young men's mm -hmm. group that started in Toronto. When? Uh, last, year. last year. Yep. Uh, they hold the prom night specific for the youth track. And then, uh, Cool. John. Hey, look, we've got your old men's. We've got three big events coming up in September in Canada, too. We make our case. He's regretting it now. <laughs> um, thanks, thanks, Peter. Okay, so what are we up to? 
personal preference. Um, sometimes I think we all know somebody who's just joined events so they can put it on their CV or have a brag or you know whatever. Um, but we all have different reasons for joining Mensa, and sometimes socialising or creating a new social network and having more friends and all this stuff isn't necessarily at the top of our list. Um, but that's all. Right. I'll give you one more. Uh, we have two members in our local group who are in, shall we say, long-term personal incarceration. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's they, they really good point. They can't get anywhere yeah. without the warden knowing about it. I think that's lack of train support. Accessibility. That's a good point. <laughs> um, okay, excellent. So, yeah, there's a few different reasons here. I'm sure there are plenty more, but these are the ones that, like I said, I've either personally experienced or know people who have, have experienced. Um, I was going to ask you what your thoughts were, but we've already talked about that. So, um, I think there's one other one. Yeah. I think people want to be invited. Want to be invited. So, yeah, and, that's, that's true. And, and I'm not sure that we do a good enough job mm. of inviting people. Yeah, that might be part sort of tied into the like social anxiety, you know, like, oh, how do I get to these people? But if you, you reach out, it does make it a bit more welcome. Something that personal touch of saying hello, yeah. once you come out, so mm. kind of makes a difference. Yeah. I know this is something that Anika in New Zealand has been doing really well. Whenever there's a new young member, yep. she's notified and so she contacts them directly. Hey, hi, I'm Anika, where are you? Let's do something. And kind of that's been working really well. So yeah, it's a really good point. Um, Anyway, back to our little isolated mints, and here he is. Um, let's, uh, <laughs> um, let's have a look at what he can access, how, how he can access Mensa. Does so anybody want to throw up any, any suggestions? First, or how, how this guy can connect to us? What are, like, what are our different outlets, like these events? There's a national newsletter. Yeah, cool. Social media, internet, internet. Yeah. Internet. it's a Google search away. Yep, all right, it's cool. Website. Website. Yeah. Brilliant. These are a few, again, just the ones that I've thought up. Um, He's got a little bit like his parents' bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a bit more cunning. Uh, sight and travel, apparently that clips off, it's not quite big enough. But sight and travel is a big aspect. I know for me, um, being uh, a member of Mensa, and traveling around Europe and, and everywhere else has just been incredibly rewarding. I've met some of the most amazing people and just had an instant community wherever I go, an instant network. So I think the site and the travel is something that's a really um, important and big part of itself. I've marked a little A there because I think it's a very active form of participation. Um, obviously, it's, it's, it's hard to be passive when you're traveling and sleeping on someone's couch or having lunch with them. Um, one of the other things is obviously physical gatherings. Again, it's uh, active participation and you know whether it's a local pub trivia night or a penguin sanctuary visit you know it's it's a physical gathering we get to have this this personal interaction uh, our website this can be active but it can also be a bit more passive people don't necessarily need to be inputting but they can just be receiving information or lurking in the forums just sort of soaking up you know there um, we do need to have uh, interactive modern websites so that, that do have or that do meet the needs of what our, our passive <laughs> we've got some heavy nodding over there <laughs> um all right, about other things six all right i know in the us you guys have like just an amazing amount of six it's incredible i think in australia we have four <laughs> <laughs> and, and i think two of them are pretty new that is beer drinking Oh, we've never really formalised that, it's just sort of assumed. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, that seems called Mensa, yeah. Um, but the thing is that, that uh, Mensa are just, like, we're all full of such variation, but the SIGs kind of provide a bit of focus for our, for our interests, so I think that's a quite important part of what we do. Um, and we've got the annual major gatherings like this, obviously. Um, this is a major part of the, the um, annual calendars. Um, I don't really need to say anything. You guys are all here, you know. <laughs> Preaching to the choir. Our uh, national magazine and newsletter. I might be a bit biased here <laughs> as editor, but um, I think this is a really important way of communicating to membership. Um, 
often it's the first point of contact or it's the most regular point of contact where people get their magazine and they, it's, it's a way of communicating from Mensa, the organisation, to Mensa, the individual. Um, keeps you in the loop. We've also got volunteering. Um, this is again a very active form of participation, but you know, you get out, sort of a cliche, but um, you get out of something what you put in. So if you're volunteering for an organisation, you really get to see more of it, experience more of it, and it's, um, it, it just brings value to, to your experience there. Um, and social media, uh, this is a big part. It's, it's different pick up in different areas, obviously, um, but uh, it's, it's a great way of overcoming a lot of those challenges, especially like geographic distance and stuff. If we can use this all correctly, it has, has great potential. And with all these things, we can make our little guy happy. That's, 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 that's the plan. So, um, in Australia, uh, we have a pretty big area. Uh, has anybody been to Australia? Yeah, cool. Right. You guys might have a bit of an idea of just how big it is. We have this population of around about 23 million people. Uh, we have 460,000 potential mensons. It's clipped off the bottom. <laughs> but the actual number of current paid up members we, only have, we have is only about 1,250. Okay, there are more people in this hotel alone than all our members, right? Can you imagine having 1,250 members in all of the US. You know, it's a similar size, it's, it's just, it's really different. <laughs> um, so we have to really explore different ways of connecting with our membership um, beyond just the this typical, hey, let's go to the pub and then we'll meet up, have dinner. Um, so for us, uh, the social media and the magazine have really been our best options because they can, can really cut across that geographic distance. Um, but enough about because I know that we're not the only ones to have, have issues and have problems uh, with, with the way that we can all connect. Uh, everybody has their, their isolated members, even here in the US. Um, so we've looked at some of the potential obstacles like geographic distance, accessibility and incarceration. <laughs> um, we've talked about the ways that we can connect SIGs, volunteering, a newsletter, but now we need to be able to unite the two. How can we overcome these challenges to really take advantage of all these things that we have? Um, oh, I haven't actually been through my presentation fully in some of the <laughs> transitions, <laughs> not what I expected. <laughs> um, but anyway, in, in what I've been doing, uh, the three key points really to engaging isolated members I think comes down to uh, things need to be accessible, we need to be able to get to reach out and, and, and take advantage of these different things. Um, things need to be interesting, we're not interested, we're not going to turn up, we're not going to take part. Um, and thirdly, uh, the marketing really needs to, um, to play a big role because if we don't know about something we don't know about it, we're not interested in it, and we can't get to it, there's that big problem. So these are the things that we need to really address. Um, so again, as editor, I have to keep mentioning that I'm the editor because it really is such a big part of what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but as editor, we have um, a Facebook page to sort of supplement uh, what we're doing, um, and also just the page on our website which kind of has basic information, and we upload our PDF copies and have articles um, they are, it is a supplement to the magazine. Um, these areas are of interest to all Australian members. They're accessible by all Australian members who have an internet connection and in the Facebook account, the Facebook uh, login. Um, now, just by themselves, they are marketing tools, they are ways of reaching out to the members and saying, hey, look, we're doing this, we're doing that, blah, blah, blah. But they're also, um, they're also marketed in the magazine as well, so it's the second step of marketing. Um, this year we've actually tried to expand our, the magazine scope by creating uh, a Mensa podcast, uh, which came up from a conversation at our last uh, Mensa conference in Australia, where I was chatting to the mother of a member and she was saying, oh, 
um, she had two kids. She said the daughter just loved reading the magazine. She'd get there, she'd read through all the articles, she'd circle her favorite one. Oh, cool, that's so brilliant to hear. <laughs> but her son doesn't really like reading so much. He loves listening, he loves um, speaking, but it's, it's more that kind of a connection that he gets a kick out of rather than sitting down and reading a magazine, which is fair enough. So they got me thinking about how we can reach this kid, and I'm sure the other members who, who feel the same. Podcast. Now that would be something that I have a lot of time to look at, yeah. So I spent a bit of time thinking about this and, and how it would work and uh, a few months ago I started recruiting volunteers to help me put it together because I have no experience, I've, I've never made a podcast, I have no idea how to do it. Um, so I started getting people to help me through. We, we have theme music. Ooh, I think you know it. I'll talk to you later. Um, so we have theme music for our podcast, which is cool. Our jazzy. Great, that's about it. Oh, we have a host. We've got a list of great people to interview. But that's that's all. It's it's such a huge project and it takes a lot of time for people who are, have day jobs and whatnot. But it's something that we're working on, and um, I think it will be really interesting. So stay tuned. Um, <laughs> uh, these are all kind of other ways to to engage. And I'm just sort of running you through some of the things that we've been trying in Australia. Um, bear with me. But one of the other things we've been doing is, is competitions. I think everybody, you know, um, takes part in competitions or has, has, I think Mensa has a lot of competitions or opportunities available. Um, in the past, I've found that most of the competitions tend to fall really flat. <laughs> Yet yeah, one guy respond to give him the prize <laughs> um, but it doesn't really work to engage so I've been kind of playing with the, uh, the formula for a while and uh, I'll, I'll let you know of this it's one I've tried in the last issue um, I had a competition um, because the thing is we don't have a big budget you know so we can't offer big prizes like free iPad and stuff like that it's more like hey we've got a Scrabble dictionary <laughs> we actually did. We had we had a big donation from the publisher a while ago. I had like six Scrabble dictionaries. This big, they cost a fortune to post. It took a long time to get rid of them. Um, <laughs> I still have two. <laughs> um, but anyway, one of the competitions um, that we tried recently was uh, where do you read tabs? Um, which is a competition for people to take a photo of themselves reading our magazine. <laughs> Email it to me, I put it on our Facebook page, I put it on our website, other people can look at it, comment, have a look, you know, that's cool, well, that's funny, rah, 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 share it around. Um, and they get a chance to win a year's free membership with Mensa Australia, which is valued at about um, maybe 80, 90 US dollars. So it's, it's a big prize, but it's, it's relevant, it's useful. I mean, it's not a huge prize, but it's big for us. <laughs> it's what we can uh, afford. Um, it's very easy to enter. Uh, it's you know it's, it's accessible. You just need a camera, and I'm pretty sure everybody here has a camera, or a camera phone, and, um, and an internet connection. Um, when I advertised this first in the May June issue of our magazine, I also advertised another competition, which is called Look Out Below, where a member um, donated a book, uh, and the signed copy of the book would go to whoever read this excerpt, and then at the end it says. Um, something was happening, I ran to the window, something was falling from the sky. People have to write in and say what was falling from the sky. They guessed it correctly, they read the book. Um, it's a lot of text, it's a bit you know, heavy, uh, so I try, tried to jazz it up a little bit with a bit of colour. And, uh, don't tell the author, but I, I put it next to the kids section of the magazine, because I thought it might be something that they would you know, make some fun guesses for. Um, actually, I should just ask you first. Which one of these two competitions would you be more likely to enter? The photo? Yeah. The, the photo? One, yeah. One on the left. Yeah. The photo, okay. Anybody would prefer to enter the look out below or fell from the sky competition? Well, if you don't want your picture taken, you're going to bring the other competition. That's true. <laughs> Although I did give the option to uh, not to include yourself. You know, if you leave it on your chair. Uh, so there's some people are a bit, bit private about that. Um, <laughs> so, so why would anybody tell me why you prefer to enter the photo competition over the 
one about the book. There's way too much to read. Too much to read? Yeah, Mensons don't like reading. <laughs> Less effort. No, but, hmm? Less effort. Less effort? Yes. Yep, okay. And it's funnier. It's funnier, yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be more fun. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, the, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> you guys are spot on. I got one response for the, uh, the what fell from the sky thing, and it wasn't from a kid, as I expected. <laughs> and he got it wrong, he wasn't correct, so I still have this book, and I'm like, okay. again, I've got these books, how do I get rid of these books? Um, uh, the the what uh, sorry the take a photo competition has been a bit slow to start up because I think it's just normal for Mensons to take a little while to get it warmed up. But uh, it ends in November when out we're having our next annual conference, so I'm hoping to have a big collection by then. Um, and I'll show you some of the ones that have come in so far, <laughs> which is great. Uh, so the membership secretary and her work. So a guy over in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said the great thing about this magazine, people are always trying to read over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. Um, had a lot of uh, really good feedback and uh, more responses are coming in. And we had uh, there was an event down in Melbourne uh, a few days ago. I haven't had a chance to go through all because I've been here with dodgy internet, but. Um, they, they got a group together and they took their magazines and after their dinner or whatnot, they all got together and said, okay, let's enter the competition. So they're all hanging out and doing silly poses and taking photos. And I don't know how long they spent doing this, but they spent a while and then they uploaded them to the Facebook page. It's been generating conversation and it's, it's great. It's, even if we, only, if we don't get any more uh, people entering, it's, it's still got a bunch of new people in, which is cool. Um, one of the other uh, competitions that we've done recently in the last issue, um, we theme every issue, by the way, and the last one was mathematics, which is not not my choice, but it worked really well. Um, and so for this issue, we I replaced all of the page numbers with equations. I got this guy, he's my puzzle uh, guy, to, to create all these equations that answer the page numbers. So we replaced those. But this guy is very tricky, and he sent me two wrong ones. And so I put them in. The competition is: you tell me which ones are wrong, and I'll send you a block of chocolate, finished chocolate, because I'm living in Finland. It's cheap, and it's not very relevant to the prize, to the, the competition. But it's a bit unique, and you know, it, it's kind of fun. Um, this this worked really well uh, for the first week. The magazine just came out about a week ago, and the first week I had a flood of responses. People were just clogging up my email uh, with all their things. Unfortunately, I, uh, I, I kind of had the dumb when I put this together, and so the competition only offered a prize to the first entrant, when it should have been a random one out of the next month or so, because after a week, people realise that someone's already claimed the prize, so they trickle off. Um, if you take nothing else from this session, <laughs> Mensons are quick and they know it. <laughs> and they like chocolate. And they like chocolate, yes. <laughs> um, it's been really good, but even uh, even after everybody stopped uh, sort of sending in these things, I got one email saying, look, I know I'm too late, but I had so much fun doing this. This was really, really great, blah, 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 blah. If someone has actually taken the time to write and tell me that, then I think there's hopefully a lot more people out there you feel that way and didn't bother writing. So I think we did pretty well with that one. Did you have to send out any scores? I didn't, no, they're all happy happy with the chocolate. <laughs> Phew, customers would be tracking me down. <laughs> um, now as I said, the last issue was mathematics and I didn't choose mathematics. There's no way, I'm, I'm not mathematically inclined. The way we chose mathematics was having a uh, voting for upcoming themes thing, which we've been doing for a while. It started as a quick Facebook poll when I couldn't make up my mind, and then it started getting everybody interested. Like, oh yeah, I want to write about this. I want to read about this. So we moved it to our website, so people didn't need a Facebook login to participate, and then they just went mental. Um, and it sparks conversations. People get really passionate. I voted for this. Oh, how is it going? And I print this this graphic in each issue, uh, so people can sort of see which ones are new, which ones coming up to the lead, and get an idea of probably what's coming. A while ago, some anonymous rascal suggested that we should have a potatoes themed issue. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, that had a lot of support. Potatoes. 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 <laughs> um, so that had a lot of support. Because they're all rascal, they're like, yeah, we'll trick her up. Yeah, she's not going to do potatoes. I'm like, really? 
Fine, so our November-December issue this year is going to be themed potatoes. <laughs> I found this uh, potato, this is actually my potato pictured here, I found it in the back of my cup, slowly growing out some things, so I was like, right, I'm going to use this, and over each issue I'm taking photos as it slowly turns into a monster and takes over my kitchen to encourage people to, <laughs> to participate. Um, <laughs> So that's kind of fun, and it's been a great way of just encouraging people to get involved. It's, it's their magazine, they kind of choose a direction of it. It also encourages really different um, article topics, you know, like mathematics, potatoes. Um, and it's, we always get a new set of contributors too. Like I hear from people I've never contacted before, they say, oh, yeah, I actually have a lot of uh, experience with potatoes, so here's my answer. <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> cool! <laughs> so it's been really, really fascinating, just sort of who comes out of the, um, out of the woodworks. Here's a couple of our themes that we've had, so it's been fairly varied. We have great photographers too. <laughs> it's really cool. We have so many people come up with creative um, images. There's a mathematics thing. Um, so the, the themes uh, have gathered a lot of interest, um, and it's something I think there's also really involved a lot of kids. I've had a lot of parents saying, oh, my kid just loves looking to see which themes are from. Um, something else that we have for kids, which we've been working on for the last mm, less than a year, I think, but we have a, a column called um, From the Mouths of Men's Babes. Um, and it's basically a place where people can send in their, their cute, funny, intelligent, witty comments that their, their men's and kids have, have come up with. And they're brilliant. I tell you what, it's, it's incredible. Some of these kids are amazing. Um, they're thought provoking and they're funny and they're accessible and interesting to everybody. Um, I, I want to show you a couple. Um, and I asked my, my man, who's also a men's, and I said, hey, can you help me choose which ones here? And he always proofreads for me because you know, he's a good man. Um, and he says, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I love that section. That's my favourite bit. Whenever I'm proofreading, I always read that first. So it's really cool. You know, it's, it's just, just for the kids. It sort of has a fairly broad appeal. Um, usually they're just printed like this, but for the next couple, I, I illustrated them. I'd like to apologise because I illustrated these on the plane and I thought I'd have a chance to redo them, but you get the idea. So take a little look. H3, this one, H3. The son of our chairman, actually, our Australian chairman. That's cute. Mm. One of my other favourites. <laughs> Just a bit cheeky. You don't expect that from a seven year old. So. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody know the answer to this? Does anybody know? Do dogs have have different DNA groups? This was a research question this kid picked for school. <laughs> <laughs> How cunning is that? <laughs> that was actually the son of a mathematician, um, so this is quite, he's been counting up, you know, obviously learning well from his dad. I can, yeah, okay. Mm. Um, uh, I have a note here. I have a, actually gone through this before and I have a note to myself I was supposed to draw one <laughs> but I've been having too much fun here talking to everybody um, this one was uh, a kid was helping his mum in the kitchen they had like a, you know those uh, dough machines or whatever they're called yeah they had like those dough hooks and holds up the two spiral dough hooks look mum this looks like my DNA <laughs> that's cool H5 or something um, so this is a really cool little part of our thing and our magazine and it's, it's really done a lot to interest and engage a lot of our members. Um, and it, it gives a little insight into our, our, our kids, our youth members, um, but for a deeper look we have started another section in our magazine called uh, Kids of Mensa. We have a profile on an adult member every issue, but then we've started one for our kids um, so that they can kind of connect to each other, uh, learn about each other and also have a bit of a chance to put themselves in the spotlight and get a bit of recognition, which I think is important. And here's a couple of our, our young members who are just so cool. They submit their, their poems and their stories and their artwork. It is, oh, it's brilliant. I love this kid. Look at this kid. He's yeah. so cool. <laughs> when, when we did this one, this was one of the first ones, his dad sent in a photo of this kid holding his magazine. 
Um, so that's something we've been doing, it's been really successful. Uh, in our next issue, I'm going to introduce a section to uh, encourage uh, kids to become email pen pals with other kids around Australia. Because um, we're all quite, you know, some of our kids live in the cities, but most of them are, again, spread out and it's a big deal. Um, the pen pal network is going to be for under 13s. Why under 13s? Some of you might know this, but um, we started uh, a Facebook group called M under 18. And it's for our medicines who are aged between 13, which is the technically the legal age for members to join Facebook, and under 18. Uh, it, it first started out as a, um, a forum for our Australian teams, you know, as a safe place to communicate, find out who else is in Mensa, and really um, just, just have a nice way of, of interacting, communicating with their peers. Um, we started in about March last year advertising around to a few people. After about six months we had eight members. After 12 months we still had eight members and there wasn't much happening. And then I was chatting to the Croatian national magazine editor and I mentioned it as something, oh yeah we tried this and it, it sucked, it really failed. But hang on a minute, maybe we could collaborate. Do you want to see if any of your teams want to join our group? Maybe we should ask everybody. Let's just invite everybody to our party. So we did. Um, we, we revitalized our marketing campaign. We, we spend it out to all our national editors. We emailed directly to our kids. We just, we attacked everybody. This is what our breakdown of our group looked like about uh, less than a week after we opened it to international. Okay, this is like the founding crew, all right? <laughs> um, and then, uh, this is what it looks like three months later. And it's, this is already out of date because I've seen... Isn't this brilliant? It's just shot up. And like I said, it's already out of date because just while I've been here this morning, there's new requests popping up into my email. Oh, this person's joined. Oh, okay. So it's out of date already, but it's great. Um, we have over 130 members from 17 different countries. Uh, we also have a separate admin group where we discuss the policies and just making sure it's all going in the right direction. And in that group we have uh, representatives from over 22 different countries who are kind of sussing things out, waiting in the wings, trying to figure out how they go through. And they include countries like uh, Canada, uh, France, UK and so on. We also have a few members who are waiting while we try to engage or try to find representatives from their groups to, to approve them, like Medsapol. We have we've got about I know, it's like eight Polish members waiting to get in, but we just need to confirm that they're members. Yes. Let me ask you about that. Yeah. Uh, you've got a USA group there, uh, so mm -hmm. have you gone through national, have you gone through local groups, or do kids just sign up? We're uh, coordinating with Lisa, thank you, ma'am. Uh -huh. um, and so she's our admin in there, so she organizes all the advertising within uh, US Mensa and also the verification of members' uh, membership and, and ages. And so when they turn 18, we do have to kick them out, but we send them on to the Mensa Youth uh, group who are brilliant and spend the world as well. Um, I was going to ask if there's anybody here under 18, but I think I can, I think I can tell. <laughs> um, but do you guys know any under 18s who might benefit from this? Yes. Yep. Cool. Yes. Spread the word, let them know, get them involved. It's cool. It's on our next newsletter. And oh. information about the group is on your leak flyer that was in your pack, so you've got the advertisement with all the details yep. on it there as well, so on your welcome pack. And uh, the other thing is, with our admin group, we welcome like any other gifted children's coordinators and whatnot to sort of get involved and just have a chat and share ideas and whatnot, so even if you're just interested and, and have a role with kids in this, then, then come and join our admin group. Um, okay, for the over 18s, we've started our, our um, Medicines at Play camps, all right, and this connects to a different group. Um, it's kind of like a, a bit of a beer and Rubik's cube sort of event. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. Oh, I've just noticed that it's cut off my. Oh, it's supposed to be cut off beer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Represent. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just noticed that the screen's been cutting off my accessibility comment on most of my slides, but uh, 
that sucks. Oh well, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, things have been accessible in different ways. So um, in Europe they've had some of these uh, youth gatherings, which I've attended a couple of, and they like 80 plus men since so we all get together and hang out. So I've been to a couple of these, and I thought, it's a good idea, I'm going to steal this idea, and I'm going to take it home. To anticipate my fellow leapers comment, Yes, I'm Australian, so it's kind of natural that I steal things with my convict heritage. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting this all week. <laughs> South Africans. Um, so uh, our first camp was held in Australia last year, um, and we had a fairly small group. There's only about 20 people, which compared to the 80 plus people, it's like, oh wow, it's really small. But uh, for our first session, it was great. We had an incredible team of people. We had so much fun and we've made lifelong friendships. Um, with uh, Australian men, so most of our uh, members are over 45, so having uh, a, a special thing for the young men since so it's outside of the annual conference and whatnot, to really give it to them is, is quite important and um, it fills a, a specific purpose. These are the people who are going to be the old mentions of tomorrow. <laughs> so to make sure that we have these, uh, this continuity, we need to really have these kind of events. Um, it is slightly less accessible because it takes a bit of time, it takes a bit of money, uh, although it is really cheap. It's like 250 US dollars for 10 days of food, accommodation, all that stuff. Um, but uh, all you need still to be able to access it is registration and travel funds and, and a bit of free time. Um, our next camp, November, December this year, 250 bucks. Spread the word, tell your friends. Oh, get me fun. <coughs> Hopefully, from our mentions at play camp, we will generate some more mental love stories. Um, has anybody had a look at the uh, the website from the flyers? Yeah, yeah, okay. Cool. I've had a couple of people come up and talk to me. Um, this started through our national magazine as well, just to, actually started as a bit of a joke. It's like, oh, you should print men's love stories. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. actually. <laughs> um, so we started getting some different people writing in, and it's, it's been slow, but it's uh, expanded internationally. And, okay, true, it, it doesn't really, well, it kind of reaches out to men's who are already engaged. See what I did there, okay? <laughs> I've never married. <laughs> um, sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> um, but it also has a, a broader passive audience, you know, the mental community. Just, hey, that's a cool story, that's a cute one, and I'll read through this. It's, it's sweet and it's sometimes very, very funny um, and thought provoking. Um, but it also serves um, as a way of connecting outside of mental as well. Here's just a couple of the photos that we've had Hong Kong. Australia or Germany, Australia and USA, Serbia, Malaysia, Australia, Serbia again. Um, it's been great. We've had so many great stories. Has anybody here found love or lost? I'm a fussy. Excellent. Good. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, to receiving your emails and photographs uh, in the next week, okay? Let's just make a deadline to this. <laughs> now, I've had some great ones actually from the US already, and it's, it's so beautiful, these stories that come through. Very, very funny. Do have a look. Um, okay. What's the URL? Uh, BeGoodCat.com slash love. Uh, it is on here as well, um, and I'll have some more yeah, links at the end. Okay, um, how are we got for time? Other stuff we've been doing, putting our website, uh, our magazine online, accessible to, to non-members. So the Men's Love Stories reaches out to uh, non-members as well, and I thought putting mag uh, articles online might be able to do that as well, but it hasn't worked particularly <laughs> um, I didn't put it up the last issue because I didn't have time and nobody's commented, nobody's noticed, so that's not a good sign. Um, I thought it might be of interest to those members who, like myself, prefer to read their news online, um, but we're still sort of tweaking it out how it would work. What do you guys think? Would you would you read your articles online? Would it work in US Mentor and your National Mentor? Sure. Maybe? 
Yeah. How would you like to receive them? Like if it's just put up on the website, then mm. you want to look at it. No. What would you? Got to be pushed. Got to push it. Getting yeah, an email. There's an email with a link. Yep. Cool. I've, I've been beaten about the head and shoulders on this uh, if from my members if if I'm a member and I'm paying full dues by damn I need to have you better you better present to me all the benefits yeah even if I'm a Luddite and refuse to have a computer mm. so uh, I've got to have my copy even though I post yeah. stuff electronically definitely not a replacement but something sort of compliment something you can share it around on Facebook comment to each other it sort of just generates some discussions, but definitely not to um, replace it. We've had some experience with the electronic newsletters. I've seen yours, actually. It's very, and, uh, very good. They, they work very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, our people actually, have a lot, lot of them, we don't have in physical form anymore at all. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. Uh, something we've, we've changed recently that's, that's actually not so great. There might be some talk about changing it back. Um, it used to be we sent a PDF file. You know, and then you can go to the uh, website and everything as well. And now it's more of a link. And we've mm -hmm. had some people starting to say, but a PDF I could download on my phone yeah. and read it on my smartphone, whereas you put it in a different format, now it's becoming accessible. Mm -hmm. So the, the, it, the portable format linked to the online system seems to be mm -hmm. a lot, not just online, something that you can carry on your phone. Yeah. That's yeah. good, it's very cunning. Um, <coughs> uh, you use scripts? Which allows you to download PDFs, so you can mm. you can allow the members to choose. Okay. Cool. It's like the YouTube yeah. of documents. Yeah. Okay. Um, in Canada, we offer members a ten dollar discount off their membership fees if they choose to receive an electronic form. So you get some people that don't yeah. want it, they want the paper, and then mm. other people tell us they're stupid for actually printing anything. Mm. So you've got two camps and you can't make all of them happy. Because we've got such a small membership, it actually costs us more if we print less. <laughs> so offering discounts is actually quite counterproductive to us. Um, but yeah, it's a something. Anyway, I've noticed the time is getting a bit uh, short. Short. So let me just skip through some of this stuff. I was going to say that we've put, um, these are some of our people who are up for election in local um, national Australia Mensa. So we put videos up online to, as a way to reach out to everybody um, and get them sort of introduced with, with their potential new leaders, which was very successful engaging new members to, to participate in, um, in voting, which is online. Uh, speaking of voting, you guys are probably aware we recently had the international elections. Um, some of you may have seen the silly little video that I made to try and remind people yeah. to, to vote. Uh, that was intended for an Australian audience. Um, I posted it on Facebook. Some people saw it and suddenly it's been viewed all around the world, <laughs> which was uh, really cool. I was going to show it, I think if most people have seen it and uh, don't have time. Sure. Yeah. We've got time? Yeah. Sure. All right. Oh, it's already going anyway. Thank you. I had a lot of fun, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I've, I've talked for way too long. <laughs> um, and I've just sort of been telling you about all the different ways that we've sort of try to engage our isolated members, try to reach out to them and, and really bring them back in. A lot of it has been very successful. I do think that we have quite a high percentage in Australian men um, who, who participate. We've still got a long way to go, but we've got a few people. Um, the thing is, everything that I've been doing uh, has been through the magazine. Most of the things I've been doing through the magazine, because that's my job. Um, I think that the editors have a very vital role in, in connecting our members to each other. Um, and well, I, won't, I won't get into that right now, but <laughs> um, so that we can get our isolated medicine to be a happy and engaged medicine, um, we, we all need to play a part. Um, it's not just the editors who have to do this, it's, it's everybody. Um, we're all in unique positions. I'm sure that here we have regional uh, secretaries, newsletter editors, SIGS coordinators, all sorts of people, and we all have a different way that we can reach out to and engage in isolated medicine. Um, 
what I'd really like, this is the Leadership Exchange Ambassador Program, so I'd really like to exchange some ideas here and get your views on, on the unique ways that we can all personally contact an individual med uh, an isolated medicine, I'm sorry. So we've got about 15 minutes left, does that sound about right for our session? 15 minutes? I'm not sure if I've got the right time here, it's been counting down funny. Um, but uh, with paper and pens at the end of every line, uh, under the seat there, white blank paper. Um, it's going to do this as a workshop where we can just get into groups. We're a fairly small group and we don't have a lot of time, so we can just sort of find a group, start chatting about what we can do individually to reach okay. out. You guys keen? Can we do this? Yep, brilliant. How can we personally engage an isolated member? Now, um, oh, these, I will be collecting your, your papers. Um, so please do write on them. <laughs> and uh, if you want to have the, uh, the feedback and put, put us all into a report later, put your emails on there as well. I can contact you directly.